Now, in order to find out the radius of curvature of plane of convex lens, what is required? We need to know the diameters of the rings. Rings of what? Rings of M and rings of N. That's it. Okay. Since we know already lambda, which is 5893, then you need only dm and dn. So how to find out this dm and dn? As we know, so there may be a rings. So there may be a rings like this. Okay, you can take the center ring, which is uh, which is zero. The next ring is you can take this is zero. One, two, three, four, like this. Okay, even you can take the next one also, right? It's up to us. Fine. Actually, what we do, for example, if you want to find out the radius of curvature, say, so this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Say, this is, for example, this is the fourth ring. Now, what you do? Move this traveling microscope towards to any side, any side. That means, either to left side or to the right side. So, for that, what you need? You need a table, serial number, so you can take a ring number, then you have a, which is the left and right, then you have a, the diameter, so like this you have, okay, so for example if you go to left, say for example if you go to serial number 1, 2, 3 like this, 4 if you have, for example say the ring number may be 6, then 4, to 0. Just example I am telling. Say if you go any side, any side of say left. Suppose if you go to left one is 6th one. If you go to left side is 6th one, then move the traveling microscope first to 6th ring. So yet, uh, whichever is a 6th ring, to that ring you are supposed to move. Then take the reading. Take the reading means you know that how to take the reading. Okay, I am not going to discuss here. But I can tell you the next video or the formula you know R is basically say reading for example any anyone basically just you have a MSR plus VSR okay VSR into LC okay so you know that Venier scale division that is MSR plus VSR into LC so the least count you have to find out and you know you need to see whichever is the Venier scale division and then you will get the main skill reading. So total reading is you will get at the sixth one. That sixth one say for example, say this may be say for example this may be say 4.55. Just example I am telling. Okay. Then move this microscope to fourth one. So if sixth is over, then move to fourth one. Then take the fourth one. You can ask sir, why should I move to six? Why should I move to four? Can't I take five? You can take, no issue. But there are many rings are there from the center. So what you do basically, you are, you are, you are supposed to, if you are uh, skipping one ring, no issue. Because there are many rings. So preferably you go up to 10th ring. Take a 10th ring, then you take 8th ring, then 6th ring, 4th ring, then 2nd ring. That's it. Okay. But just a timing I have given, 6, 4, 2, 0, like this. So... Say for example, 6 ring is this one, 4.55, then obviously this is one side. So the next is say for example, this may be say 4.05. Just take an, an example. Then going to the second ring, then the second ring is say taking this may be say 3.5. Okay, then for zero ring, yes for zero ring, we can able to take, but we are not considering this zero ring. So then again you are going to the right side. So the right side ring may be giving, say this may be, say 2.0, then the next one is say 1.5, then the next one is 1.0. I am just taking an example. These are not the accurate uh, actual um, figures, but I am telling an example why we are, I mean how to do the calculation in order to find the radius of curvature. So in order to find this radius of curvature, what you do, this 6th ring and 4th ring, 2nd ring like this you have. So then, in order to find the radius of curvature, what you, what you have basically, you need to find the diameter. So diameter means basically, what you do? So diameter of the first, that means, so the first one is here is sixth one. So for sixth one, so diameter is, you need to subtract from here. Nothing but 4.55 minus 1.0. So that is how much? Which is 
three point four point uh, mean four point five five minus one point zero is three point five five. Similarly, this is this is how much point five, right? So this is what is happening basically. So this is what diameter. So what you observe here basically, what you observe, this is three point five five, which is two point five five. Then the next one is one point five. So that means what is happening? What you observe for a higher higher order ring, diameter is more, and for next order diameter is less. Then the next order diameter is less. So what is basically ha is happening is this one. You can see this this one also. So the, it simply says that whichever is the lower ring, which has lower diameter, whichever is higher ring, which has higher diameter. So in that way you can cross check also while doing experiment. Okay, by taking readings and taking that whether the which is in the right or not that you can cross check. Okay, so think you should have a clear cut idea that. If you are going from higher ring to downward, then the ring's diameter should be smaller. Ring's diameter should be smaller. So it will it will become smaller, smaller, smaller. So the size, I mean, the diameter size becomes decreases. So in that way you can cross check. So now you know the diameter of individual rings, either sixth ring, fourth ring, second ring, or tenth ring, or whatever. Okay. Now what you are doing? What you are supposed to do? You have to find out the radius of curvature. So radius of curvature. Say for example, if I want to find the radius of curvature, I can take. Say for example, I can take m is this one. Say m is equal to six, and I can take uh, n is equal to two. So that is our understanding. It is just for our understanding. I am taking m is equal to six and n is equal to two. In that way, what you do? This r is equal to say d six square minus. D four square divided by four into six minus four into lambda. Clear? So this how you do basically? You need to plot a graph. Simply you need to plot a graph saying zero, two, four, six, eight, ten like that. So you will have this is diameter square on the y-axis and number of rings on. Number of rings on x-axis. So this, what you are do? Basically, you have a, a ring for uh, you have a diameter for second, and you have a diameter for four, and you have a diameter for six. Similarly, eight and ten. So what you do in the graph? Basically, you need to find a slope. What the slope gives for any two? What you have here? Six and four. So where is six? This is six. This is four. Nothing but this is d six. Square here, so the coordinates here is d six square and six. Then for this is this is d two square. Okay, so just taking like this. Now now what you do? The slope is basically like this. So this is y two minus y one and x two minus x one. This y two minus y one is basically how much? D six square minus say d as like. I think uh, we have taken here is uh, two. I am replacing here uh, two here. Sorry, okay. I am replacing. Earlier we have planned uh, six and two, so I am taking two. Six and two, six and two. So d six square minus d two square. Similarly, this is six minus two. So now, now we got it. So this is what the graph. Then from this graph again we are what we are doing. We'll get the values. How much is d six square? We can able to put this value. So we know the diameter of six, three point five five square of that value. Similarly, d two square means we know the one point five have a square that is two point two five, right? Then divided by four into six minus two into this lambda is how much? Five eight nine three. Okay. So finally, you get the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens is in the in the order of. Few centimeters, some tens of centimeters, or even that depends upon the the type of the plano convex lens which you are using. It may be up to hundred centimeters also. So in this way, in this way, we are supposed to do the experiment. 
So earlier we have discussed about the theory, then we, are go we have discussed about the experiment. Actually, there is a, a small point, even I forgot while telling. You see, basically, the ring is basically the center ring, basically, it, it was dark. The center ring was a dark, as we, we used to observe in the laboratory. Okay, but in generally, in generally, basically, we know that uh, why it is dark. Why it is dark, basically? It is because of the destructive interference. It is because of the destructive interference. Then the next one is bright. Nothing but, actually this is a board. That's why it is appearing, everything is bright. But the center should be like this. Dark means completely dark. But, okay. Then the next is bright. Then the next one is dark. So like that it will come. Okay. So, that, that point you have to have an understanding. The center one is, say for example, why because it is dark? Because there is a the air contact. I mean there is no air contact between the PCL and glass plate. That's why it was dark. So there was no interference. There is no path difference. Since path difference is zero. Okay. So there is no uh, waves are reflected. That's why the center ring is dark. So it was Okay. So it was the center one is the dark. So this is what basically you can understand and uh, you have a you can able to find the R value. Okay. Thank you very much.